What's poppin', beautiful people up in YouTube land? Put the 3 in G Valley, you feel me? And this video right here, Joey Badass, born in the wrong era. I mean, I could see that because he is a boom bat 90s type artist. So if like he was doing this in like 97, he'd probably be like top in the game. But I mean, he's like an entity. I call people like, like, Joey Badass, people that like, that that give quality work that's like not in the mainstream, like the entities, bro, like you, they're there for a reason, like they're in like certain aspects of places, but let me stop rambling, let's get into them. He came like painted as like this champion of the boom bap era mm -hmm. and, and the golden era of hip hop, like this savior. Did you feel that was a fair title? Was that pressure to live up to? Because because obviously you're appreciative of that era, but you're, you're from this era. At first, it was something that like I was proud of. As I started progressing through my career, I started seeing it as something that like people were using to marginalize me. You, you don't want anybody to tell you how to paint your picture. You know what I'm saying? You, you just don't want to be marginalized. Like, I don't even think it's an artist part. I really and I think, my, my, I think you need to just keep doing what you're doing, bro. Like, it's, it works. You need to see a, a human being thing. With substance reduced to the outskirts, many modern rappers aren't concerned with the immortality. They're simply stockpiling as much cash and clout as they can for however long their relevance holds up. Meanwhile, some MCs are still seeking to plow ahead with their own distinct visions. But with the exception of Kendrick and Cole, these radicals largely find themselves stranded on the cusp of wider fame by refusing to water down. From Denzel Curry to j Mafia, like Injury Reserve, Clipping, and the Beast Coast crew, they're all afflicted with an informal ceiling on them where, in previous eras, their unique perspective and originality may have been their selling point. When it comes to this scenario, no one is more of a case study for this exasperating fate than Brooklyn's own Joey Badass. Emerging into the internet-led hip-hop sphere before he'd even graduated I remember when high school, dropped. the enigmatic Badmon made a name for himself I was like, this young nigga killing it. with a political, socioeconomic, and interpersonal awareness that far exceeded his years. Arriving as the leading export from the Malaya Obama endorsed Capital Steve's guided pro era, the click I'm not gonna hold you pro era, like they was they was far beyond their time, bro. Like they they visuals was A one, bro. Besides like ASAP mob, like it was like top tier when it came to visuals in the early to early teens. Reported themselves to be the best and believed it to be evident. Set to be on his third life, Joey's approach to his craft was informed by teachings of the generation that had been drip-fed into his consciousness since his early age. I represent hip-hop in its form that you have to be very gifted with words to be considered an MC, he told The Guardian. Just to even get that title is an honor. I was raised on a high standard. The people who were considered great in my household were Jay-Z, Tupac, and Nas. Granted, this is nothing remarkable and is a staple diet for countless rappers, but to Cali-based pro-era Chuck Strangers, Joey's vitality comes from his vision. So Joey is like a producer. <laughs> he doesn't make a beat, but he produces what he wants to hear. He'll direct it. He'll even be hands-on. You'll give him the stems and he'll make his own tweaks. He's the point guard. He's our Westbrook, Curry, or Kyrie. Where artists such as Vince Staples feel that it is necessarily placed on a pedestal, Joey has always refused to dilute his love and that appreciation for the era that his parents conceived him in. For me, the 90s were the golden age of hip-hop. 1999 was the last year of that age, and I think, the last hope for real hip-hop. As an unintended consequence of his views, Joey had been regularly so short by those who view him as a revivalist carrying the flag for a subcategory of hip hop that's met its demise. But the reality of the situation yeah, is entirely mad young different. Man. Far from a copyist that's retracing the same old patterns, some of Joey's work is unmistakably indebted to the past while still bringing his transferable traits to the present day. 
On his breakout mixtape 1999, he repackaged Doom Beats, Boom Bap, and the anti-establishment sentiments of early hip-hop. On his major debut, Before the Money, he enlisted DJ Premier for paper trails before updating Nas, keeping his imprisoned homie spirits afloat on One Love with his peace of mind. Meanwhile, All-American Badass took the spirit of Chuck D. Bro, that All-American, bro, that shit is so deep. Bro. Comment and that prez into a vibrant new space. Informed by feeling like I had to do something about what's happening to influence change, this, in terms of hip hop, has been Joey's unique selling point ever since he first emerged. Despite his awareness that he couldn't do boom bap forever, what good is the artist without growing? There are subsets of hip hop's audience that refuse to deviate from this perception of his work. Attesting to the inalienable weight of first impression, Joey unfairly became the poster boy for a slumbering sound from the moment that he arrived as an adolescent MC with a dream. But back when he was still on the come up, there was an infamous moment where Tyler and Our Future, then positioned at the vanguard of brash counterculture hip hop, seemed to be openly mocking Joey's music on MTV. Oh, I forgot all about Our Future too in the early teens. They visuals was crazy too. So Tyler is still killing it with the visuals. Be rap fix. Whether it was his clothes or his retro futuristic rhyming, Tyler and friends were largely dismissive. No way. Yo, it's good, man. Ugly. Yo, that's that's that's. You say you ugly? Joey, that. <laughs> yo, you look like Squidward House. Man. Everybody say that. He's retarded. Yo, Joey, where you at right now, Joey? Yo, I'm in school. You in school? Go, go, go. Yeah. Wolf Gang. We don't give a fuck about no other artist. That. Earl, you seen Joey? Joey Badass' Survival Tactics video. What'd you think? It was it was all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something the craziest thing, bro. Them niggas is not even together. Like they. They split up crazy, bro. It was cool. You, you can... Niggas got sub genre groups in they John and they, and they whole crew. That Joey put forth? I mean, I guess it was cool for him. I wouldn't use it, but keep doing your thing and stay in school. No, no, no doubt, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> Years later, he'd appear on the 2016 Flognaw Carnival before Tyler and Joey finally teamed up on wax within West Side Gun's Pray for Paris project. This may seem insignificant, oh, yeah, I was just recently. but the fact that it took two stars of the same era so long to link yeah, up it was speaks a to how that, that's long basically it a new decade of being unfairly deemed a tribute act to watch. That is a new decade. In the meantime, Joey found himself increasingly aggravated by today's culture. Taken to Twitter, he vented his frustrations with the frivolous, nondescript music that he hears around him. Rap is in a very trash state right now, <laughs> with very few exceptions that don't even get the love. Alright, I get what he's saying here to a certain extent, but bro, we in a very experimental stage of rap right now, bro. It's like... You got multi facets you could just go into. There's multiple genres in the genre. Like, it's whatever you like. So it's very, I don't know. I can't, can't really deserve. say it's like trash. Like where y'all at? Like Music most is the most people... influential force in the world. Pay attention to what's being oversaturated. It says something about the generation. Sound is vibration. Not content to falling in line, unpacking Joey's status in the game and how it may be depleted compared to where he'd be if he had been working in the 90s all comes down to where his head is at. For one thing, his purpose for making music makes him an outlier in a financially oriented time frame. Ultimately, my goal is to get people up and start making changes and living life and following your dreams. He told HuffPost, just get up and go get it no matter what it is. Away from the philosophies that he hopes to impart, where some rappers will offhandedly dispense music to pad out their profiles, this, in Joey's mind, is a harmful trap that he refuses to be ensnared by. It's not fast food. It's not something that keeps coming. Even though I like it to be like that and my fans will like it to be like that, he told Complex during a recent interview, I just need time. I'm talking about my life. I'm talking about my experiences. That doesn't always happen in six months. Sometimes not much happens in six months that's yeah, super point. significant to express through art. Yeah, point. Or I, I agree with that to hundred to a hundred and ten percent. Cause a lot of these rappers, bro, they'll drop they'll drop something and then like next week they drop something new. It's like, bro, like 
let me let me get to digest the other shit and then it, i mean like now i get it like it, it plays off of what he was saying like majority of the artists are following that fast food circuit fast food fast rap circuit over there like where they they gotta stay consistent so like they dummy down the lyrics and all that but um uh, sometimes you need another six months to even process what you just went through so it's just about taking my time to produce the best body of work i won't settle for anything less than a classic solely interested in prime cuts rather than the entrails this situation is afforded to him by refuting the mainstream machine something which thanks to the internet is afforded a pro era in a way that would have been unfeasible in a that visual is fire and I his fit is fire on it and i turned it into positive inspiration and focus he told observer when you're independent you have way more creative freedom it means you're able to make bread off an album it's more work for sure but it's the way i built it Empowered by an audience that holds his informative and lyrically engulfing style in high esteem, Joey Badass isn't as removed from modern hip-hop circles as some will believe. Instead, the grind he's put in to solidify his brand allows him to engage with it exclusively on his terms. When it comes to collabs, his excursions outside the fortified ranks of Beast Coast Bubbly are few and far between, but retains their impact. That's talent. Whether it's All Cole, the, that one picture. Q, or the reoccurring link up with Chronics on each album, Joey keeps his operation tight knit and populated by MCs that he has admiration for. Even when he's worked with the late XXX Tentacion on Questions Infinity 888 and the Charge King's Dead Freestyle, it wasn't born of financial viability or the sort of black and white pragmatism that comes from hip hop as dedicated from the boardroom. It was just two independent artists converging on the grounds of mutual admiration. Compare this to how Joey's verse was taken off of Post Malone's Rockstar. Said to be present throughout the Can studio sessions, be on Rockstar? it seems he was removed due to being an unproven commodity to the mainstream audience, while 21 Savage was a safe bet. However, Joey seemed unfazed by the whole scenario and simply reaped the rewards of his pen. I actually co-wrote the song with Post, he later revealed. Quietly got my first number one off that, more ghostwriting in 2018. When Joey's supporters are that. rightfully angered by his diminished status, his tactful approach to the Post Malone incident encompasses Joey's outlook on his life and career. Unencumbered by the classic industry machine and free to release what he wants when he wants, Joey is content with his position and believes his presence is being felt in ways that outweigh the billboard prominence. Known to speak with an unflinching honesty in his bars, Joey feels that he is now breaking ground for older MCs in the way that they'd ignited his passion all those years ago. Adamant that he had a hand in inspiring Jay-Z's 444, he stated that, I put certain pressure on these OGs in the rap game, like, they know what they gotta talk about now, cause they got young Joey Badass coming out, talking about it before they get a chance to talk about it. That's a fact though, I'm not even gonna hold you, he may, he may have a point there, cause, I mean like, a lot of these older rappers, bro, they be trying to keep up with the game. They be still talking about the old shit that they talking about. It's like, nigga, I want to know about, like, your life now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I want to see um, Ye do, and I always wanted to, because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big Ye fan, bro. That's my number one fan, the number one artist, bro. I want to see him redo late registration, but make it. Now, because everything he was talking about is like what his future, what he predicted. Had a wife with a, with a fatty, had kids, have his son, tell him all that. So I would like to see him, you know, play on that. Like, I mean, granted, like, you know, he don't want to do all the curse on it. He can make it PG. He can make it PG. To many, the insightful style that Joey's fans laud is the impregnable barricade that stopped this quest to become a household name. But as I love far that as video. Joey is concerned, I love that video. history will smile with greater fondness on his legacy than many of those who pursue trends over timelessness. As he barrels towards a new album, this won't do anything to quell the injustice that his supporters in the hip-hop world feel about his place adjacent to hip-hop's power source. But as the youngest under 30 on the Forbes list sees it, being overlooked is an important tool at his disposal. I'd rather be underrated than overrated because I always have this place to get to. You know what it is? It's social currency. Oh, people right, wanna too. feel as if they're empowering you with something. The fact that you could still put people on a Joey Badass makes it exciting. If you can't put nobody on to something, there's no social value. You don't feel relief or joy by sharing this with somebody else. So I think being underrated is good.
This has been a hip hop man. It's original. I agree with him. Uh, I would say he he really he. It's not like he's born in the wrong era. I would say if he was doing music in the nineties, like he would be top tier. But I mean, in the, the day, like I said, he's an entity, bro. Like he got sub genres in the in the in the rap. Feel me? So he has a place, and he's always gonna have a place, especially because like where he's at, like. Cause there's a lot of artists that came with him in that boo back era in the early teens. I was saying, and like they nowhere to be found. Or like they still in the underground realm. So he has a face, like people know him. Like so, but this is G. I'm flying up out of here. Peace.